10 American mobsters who were not Italian Americans. The relationship between Italian Americans and the Mafia is as solid as the relationship between Italian Americans and On account of a long history of movies, books and TV shows focused on crowd families like the Corleones and the Sopranos, just as a large group of genuine stories canvassed in films like The Untouchables, Goodfellas and, obviously, a definitive exemplary criminal flick Gotti featuring John Travolta, when we consider American composed wrongdoing, we think Italian. However, that essentially isn't the entire story. Here's elite of contract killers, buttonmen and bagmen who are assuredly not Italian. Number 10 Shunda Burns. Composed crime is a perilous game. In the event that the specialists get you, your propensities will backfire. In the event that your adversaries get you, your face will get brushed off. Not many mobsters live a long, peaceful life and bite the dust of mature age. Shunda Burns figured out how to endure the brilliant period of criminal history, the 20s and 30s, and prevailing in the similarly vicious 50s and 60s. He was killed during the wild 1970s, exploded alongside his extravagant Lincoln Continental by a bomb planted, purportedly, by the Hells Angels, reached by his previous master Danny Green. Burns was conceived in Czechoslovakia in 1907. One month after his introduction to the world, Burns' family emigrated to New York City. Incapable to get by, Burns' family moved to Cleveland, Ohio where his mom set up an illicit liquor still in their loft during Prohibition. In 1920, the still exploded as Burns' mom was close to it and executed her, leaving youthful Shunder to initially need to live in a Jewish halfway house before inevitably being taken in by his grandma. From the 1930s until his hazardous demise in 1975, Shunder Burns rose through the positions in Cleveland's hidden world, turning into the town's most dreaded and outgoing mobster, continually researched, captured and delivered, increasing a notoriety for being a numbers ruler and as a middle person between fighting hoodlums. After his demise, Cleveland proceeded to endure a lot more bombings in the wake of Burns' death, getting named Bomb City, USA in the press with 36 bombings in 1976 alone. Number 9 Mickey Featherstone. This was a wrecked man. One could make the contention that entering the Marine Center during the tempestuous Vietnam War at 17 years old basically fixed his destiny, the naive youngster, conceivable holding basic schizophrenia, occupied with brutal battle in the Green Damnation and White Warmth Cap was the contention in Vietnam. He was released on clinical grounds in 1967, professing to encounter mind flights. At the point when Mickey got back to the famously rough, Irish overwhelmed Hell's Kitchen zone of New York, his brutal propensities proceeded. That is the point at which the Westies, a heartless pack of Irish-American blackmailers, extortionists and agreement executioners, took in the savage youthful Featherstone and put him to work. Featherstone turned into an esteemed agreement executioner for the Westies, working under the immediate request of group pioneer Jimmy Coonan. Featherstone and Coonan were pursued for the homicide of a Hell's Kitchen barman in 1979 yet were vindicated, not for need of proof, one legal hero lied himself at preliminary and a key observer just so happened to end his own life. Right. Featherstone got frustrated with Coonan and the Westies after they manufactured a closer coalition with the Gambino wrongdoing family. Featherstone wasn't excessively excited about non-Irish mobsters and loathed the manner in which different gatherings utilized the Westies as celebrated task young men. He turned state's observer in 1987, his declaration assisting with cutting down the Westies, seeing numerous individuals, including Coonan himself, sent to jail. He presently lives under an accepted name someplace in the USA. Number 8 Caspar Holstein. One of the most convincing characters in HBO's Forbidden period dramatization Promenade Empire was Dr. Valentin Narcis, a Marcus Garvey supporting mainstay of his locale that additionally enjoys some detestable hoodlum conduct, depicted by the astonishing Jeffrey Wright. This magnificent character was motivated by one of the most captivating men in 20th century African American history. Caspar Holstein. Holstein lived at Huge, he claimed numerous extravagance vehicles, had two stylish lofts in New York's Harlem Territory, a house on Long Island and a huge number of sections of land of land in the province of Virginia. The primary contrasts between most mid-20th century American money managers and Holstein? 1. He was dark. 2. He brought in his cash through unlawful betting. 
His numbers racket was extremely mainstream during the 1920s among the occupants of Harlem and he was a mainstay of African-American culture. He paid for youthful individuals of color to go to school, gave out food bundles to the destitute and even financed residences in southern dark colleges. Similar to most wrongdoing figures of the age, Holstein gradually backed away from the criminal life, in the end resigning in 1937 after he was captured for his contribution in betting, going through only one year in prison. Number 7 Murray the Camel Humphreys Murray's family emigrated to the U.S. from the little provincial town of Landinum in Powess, Wales in the last part of the 1800s. Humphreys rapidly falling into to the most loved distractions of mid-20th century kids in Chicago, clench hand battling and thievery. He was taken under the wing by a reformist-appointed authority named Jack Murray who attempted to get the clever youthful Humphreys to think about a daily existence inside the law calling. Humphreys didn't follow that way however unquestionably utilized numerous exercises in how the legal framework functioned, turning into a curve controller of law implementation and finder of political influence. The way he turned out to be important for Al Capone's Chicago outfit is really astounding, tantalizingly ailing in enough key information to deliver the story unbelievable instead of basically a reference in Horde history. Humphreys had fallen in with a little league hood named Fred Evans who needed to develop his smuggling activity yet was puzzled by the size and simplicity with brutality showed by individuals from Capone's posse. Humphreys concluded that battling shoot with discharge was the best arrangement, commandeering a Capone truck at gunpoint. Individuals from the outfit recognized Humphreys as the shooter and carried him to Al Capone. Tragically we don't have the foggiest idea about the idea of their gathering, yet we do realize that normally any individual hauled into a meeting with Capone wouldn't leave with his legs unblemished, and may even leave through the indirect access. In a rug. Murray Humphreys some way or another figured out how to intrigue Capone enough to get himself selected into the association he had quite recently looted visually impaired. No one hustles like the hump Capone said. Humphreys is likewise supposed to be the motivation for Tom Hagen. The Corleone family's Consilere played by Robert Duval in the Guardian films. Number 6 Kenetto. A rodent is a rodent in any language. In Japanese, the word is Nozumi. Yet that likewise signifies mouse in English. All things considered, whatever the right Japanese phrasing, Chicago-based mobster Kenetto jabbered to the feds about the Chicago outfit. Having left his local California, after a spell, in the same way as other Japanese Americans, in an internment camp during the 40s, Eto moved to Chicago in 1949. He set up a numbers game and immediately began rounding up oodles of cash, $200,000 every week, with $3,000 discovering its way into the pockets of degenerate cops that permitted Eto to flourish. He was working under the gift of the Chicago outfit for quite a long time until, in 1983, the FBI revealed Eto's unlawful Belito game. Apprehensive that Eto would turn state's observer, the Horde chose to take him out. Eto endured three discharges to the head because of the projectiles being hand stacked with a lacking measure of black powder, a strategy intended to stop specialists following the shooters through the spent ammunition, the underpowered are just brushing Eto's skull instead of blowing his head. Ken Eto recuperated and continued to affirm taking into consideration the state to get 15 mobsters in jail alongside a group of degenerate cops. Eto entered the Observer Security Program, migrated to Georgia where he carried on a long, occasion-free life. He died in 2004. Number 5 Chelsea's Boas Chelsea's Boas steered the Greek horde of Philadelphia through the tempestuous 70s, producing a nearby bind with Raymond Martorano, envisioned a fighter for the city's long-standing wrongdoing family the Scarfos, and supervising advance sharking, betting and methamphetamine tasks. Subsequent to declining to submit to Nicodemo Scarfos' organization to settle up a road assessment to the family so as to continue working, a move that would basically retain Philly's Greek crowd into the Scarfo wrongdoing realm, Boas was gunned down at the city's Melitis Greek restaurant in 1981, where he was feasting with his associate Jeanette Kuro. Raymond Martorano and radio personality Jerry Blavet. Alongside Boas, Kuro was additionally slaughtered while Martinero and Blavet got away with minor wounds. Since his demise, and the killing of other conspicuous Greek mobsters during the 80s, the Greek crowd has attempted to recapture any traction in the American hidden world. Number 4 Voislav Stanomirovic. Obscure doings, 
goal-oriented heists and global political skullduggery are components secured by incredible writers like Voislav Stanomirovic. They are likewise the activities of a grimy, abominable vocation criminal. Like Voislav Stanomirovic. This Serbian mobster turned Jorno was a curve shark, driven to some degree by the affection he held for his local Serbia, alongside his adoration for taking sparkling objects. Famous as far as concerns him in the 1971 theft at the Villa Vizakaya in Florida that saw unexpected $1.5 million worth of workmanship and silver articles, including an extremely valuable silver bowl once claimed by Napoleon Bonaparte, Stanimirovic took care of his obligations to society and proceeded to compose professionally. His strength? Wrongdoing, obviously. His child, Pavle, envisioned, followed in his dad's crook and editorial strides going through 16 years in prison more than two stretches and now covering criminal stories for distributions, for example, the Washington Post and online work with the Daily Beast. Number 3 Jose Miguel Battle When Benicio del Toro has been cast to play a genuine figure, you realize that individual will undoubtedly be a boss. At the point when you consider that a similar person additionally battled for the U.S. moved renegades in the messed up Bay of Pigs intrusion got detained for a long time by the Cubans before escaping back to the U.S. to manufacture a criminal domain. I mean, for what reason are we just getting a film now? During the 70s and 80s, he turned into the pioneer of the corporation, a rambling wrongdoing-slash-business realm that comprised of Belita games over the U.S. eastern seaboard just as possessions in Peruvian club and a large group of interests in real organizations. After numerous years on the spat Peru, Battle was arraigned back in the U.S. on racketeering charges, having amassed more than $1 billion from drug dealing, unlawful betting and credit sharking. He passed on while anticipating a jail move in 2007 at 77 years old. Number 2 Johnny Onionhead Eng Johnny Eng, a.k.a. Onionhead or Automatic Rifle Johnny, was the pioneer of the Flying Dragons Road Pack during the 1980s. Controlling heroin in the Chinatown region of New York. Eng's ruthless reign reached a conclusion in 1993 when he was condemned to 24 years in prison, having to make good $3.5 million in fines and surrendering his gigantic Pennsylvania bequest as further discipline. Some portion of the domain was supposedly utilized as a discharging range by individuals from the Flying Dragons, sharpening their precision with assault rifles. A year after his delivery in 2010, Eng's better half Laurie was killed by another flying dragon part, David Chia, who slaughtered himself, likely so as to stay away from Johnny Eng's reprisal. Number 1 Charlie Wall This wasp, white, somewhat English-Saxon, Protestant, who turned into the dignitary of the hidden world in Tampa, Florida didn't have the typical unpleasant childhood related with American mobsters. Divider was from an affluent family. His dad was a regarded doctor and his mom was the girl of the previous chairman of Tampa. He held influence over the city's illicit betting rackets for quite a long time, making millions and permitting him to increase political associations that hardened his position. He won a ruthless turf war with mobster Ignacio Antonoria who, in 1940, was gunned down while making the most of his morning espresso at an eatery. Divider couldn't win his subsequent crowd war, in 1955. Wall was slaughtered by getting beaten to a wicked mash with a home run stick and having his throat cut at his home. The hit was likely arranged by his most noteworthy adversary, well-known Florida hoodlum Santo Traficante Sr.